Welcome once again, my friends, and thank you for stopping by to listen to an old storyteller. Today we have a Jewish tale for Hanukkah, and the title of this story is The Vanishing Flame. It was the first night of Hanukkah. Outside a snowstorm raged, but inside it was tranquil and warm. The Reb, Rabbi Baruch of Izhibuz, grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, stood in front of the menorah, surrounded by a crowd of his chassidim. He recited the blessing with great devotion, lit the single candle, placed the shamash, or servant candle, in its designated place, and began to sing, Hanero Halalu. His face radiated holiness and joy. The awed chassidim stared intently at him. The flame of the candle was burning strongly. Reb and Chadassim sat nearby and sang Mao's Sur and other Chanukah songs. All of a sudden, the candle began to flicker and leap wildly, even though there wasn't the slightest breeze in the house. It was as if it were dancing or struggling. And then it disappeared. It didn't blow out. There was no smoke. It just was not there anymore. It was as if it flew off somewhere else. The Reb himself seemed lost in thought. His attendant went over to relight the wick, but the Reb waved him off. He motioned to the Chadasim to continue singing. Several times, between tunes, the Reb spoke words of Torah. The evening passed delightfully, and the Chadasim present had all but forgotten about the disappearing Hanukkah candle. It was nearly midnight when the harsh sound of carriage wheels grating on the snow and ice exploded the tranquility. The door burst open and in came a chassid who hailed from a distant village. His appearance was shocking. His clothes were ripped and filthy, and his face was puffy and bleeding. And yet, in stark contrast to his physical state, his eyes were sparkling and his features shone with joy. He sat down at the table, and with all eyes upon him, began to speak excitedly. This isn't the first time I came to Miss Hibu's by the forest route, and I know the way very well. But there was a terrible snowstorm this week, which greatly slowed my advance. I began to worry that I wouldn't get here in time to be with the Reb for the first night of Chanukah. The thought disturbed me so much, I decided not to wait out the storm, but to plod ahead and travel day and night in the hope that I could reach my destination on time. That was a foolish idea, I must admit, but I didn't realize that until too late. Last night, I ran into a gang of bandits who were quite pleased to encounter me. They figured that if I was out in this weather, at night, alone, I must be a wealthy merchant whose business could not brook delay. They demanded that I surrender to them all of my money. I tried to explain. I pleaded with them but they absolutely refused to believe that I had no money. They seized the reins of my horse and leapt on my wagon. They sat themselves on either side of me to keep me under close surveillance, then drove me and my wagon off to meet their chief to decide my fate. While they waited for their chief to arrive, they questioned and cross-examined me in great detail and searched me in the wagon and beat me, trying to elicit the secret of where I had hidden my money. I had nothing to tell them except the truth, and that they weren't prepared to accept. After hours of this torture, they bound me and threw me, injured and exhausted, into a dark cellar. I was bleeding from the wounds they had inflicted, and my whole body ached in pain. I lay there until the evening when the gang leader came to speak with me. I tried to the best of my ability to describe to him the great joy of being in the Reb's presence and how it was so important to me to get to the Reb by the start of the holiday that it was worth it to endanger myself by traveling at night. It seemed that my words made an impression on him, or else he was persuaded by my adamacy even under torture. But whichever it was, thank God he released me from the handcuffs, saying, I sense that your faith in God is stronger, and your longing to be with your Reb is genuine and intense. Now we shall see if this is the truth. I am going to let you go, but you should know that the way is extremely dangerous. 
Even the most rugged people never venture into the heart of the forest alone, only in groups, and especially not in a storm and at night. You can leave and try your luck, and I am telling you, if you get through the forest and the other terrible conditions safely, unharmed by the ferocious wild beasts or anything else, then I will break up my gang and reform my ways. If you actually reach the outskirts of the city, then throw your handkerchief into the ditch next to the road, behind the signpost there. One of my men will be waiting, and that is how I will know that you made it. I then became terrified all over again. The hardships I had already endured were seared into my soul, and now even more frightening nightmares awaited me. But when I thought about how wonderful it is to be with the Reb at the menorah lighting, I shook off all my apprehensions and resolved not to delay another moment. My horse and carriage were returned to me, and I set off on my way. There was total darkness all around. I could hear the cries of the forest animals, and they sounded close. I feared that I was surrounded by a pack of vicious wolves. I crouched down over my horse's neck and spurred him on. He refused to move in the pitch blackness. I lashed him. He didn't budge. I had no idea what to do. At that moment, a small light flickered in front of the carriage. The horse stepped eagerly towards it. it the light advanced. The horse followed. All along the way, the wild animals fled from us, as if the tiny dancing flame was driving them away. We followed that flame all the way here. I kept my end of the bargain and threw my handkerchief at the designated place. Who knows? Perhaps those cruel bandits will change their ways, all in the merit of that little light. It was only then that the Kassidim noticed that Reb's Chanaka light had returned. There it was, burning in the elaborate menorah, its flame strong and pure, as if it had just been lit. Thank you once again for listening to this story. If you enjoyed this story, please press that like button. Also, Please help an old storyteller out by subscribing to my channel. The next story will be posted in a few days, so until then, may your story continue to be a good one.